Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidah Anbiya Yul Mursalin Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in Wa man ihtada bihadihi ila yawmidini wa ba'd Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana Innaka anta al-alim al-hakim Alhamdulillah All praises and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to bring to you another reminder from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from our series of hadith from the compilation of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said La yahillu damu mu'im muslimin illa bi ihdath thalath that the blood of a Muslim is not lawful, which means it cannot be lawfully shed unless for one of three reasons, for one of three class, one of three categories. First one, a thayyibu zani, a married man who is an adulterer, who commits adultery. Second, one nafsu bin nafs, a life for a life, which means a murderer, commits a murder. And the third, وَتَارِقْ لِدِينِهِ الْمُفَارِقْ Jamara, The one who desert his religion and he abandoned his community. He abandoned the Jama'a, the community. This hadith is recorded by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saying this hadith. We need to understand, we need to go back and look at the reason why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa come to mention this. Because by just... Mere looking at the hadith or mere hearing the word of the hadith, one may end up having a wrong comprehension of the like of what Islam is about. Someone may think that Islam is a religion of brutality, but that is not the case, it is completely opposite. The time when Rasulullah before he came, the people of Arab, even if you were to look into the history of Arab today, not the history of Islam, even the history of Arab, it was found that they were very they were living a barbaric life. They were living a life that they did not value the life of another human being. Human life did not have any sort of value. And that was for men. For the case of female, it was even worse. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even mentioned in the Quran, وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ Regarding to the things and the affairs and the action that these Arabs used to con they used to do and the people that used to live in those days before Islam came, their actions, they used to they used to even bury their girl child alive. Because having a girl children, having a girl child was a form of disgrace for them. They had no value for the life of a girl child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran in that regard that when that girl child was that was buried alive, when she will be asked on the day of judgment, when justice will prevail she will be questioned, she will be asked as a form to show the parent that there was no wrong from the girl child side, there was no wrong from the child side. And she will be questioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for what sin was you killed? What wrong did you do that they killed you? We all know they did not do any wrong, they were a child, they were infant, they were toddler, they could not have done anything. Just out of shame of community to show their face, they had to feel that the responsibility and the burden of having a girl child was much more. So, just an insight to show that they had no value for life of human being among the time before Islam came. A person can kill for no reason. The Arabs, the tribes used to fight for centuries after centuries, generations after generation, fighting used to happen, revenge. The, the newer generation will not know why they fight, but just because their father fought or their, my grandfather was killed from that tribe, they will continue fighting as a form of revenge. A tribe used to fight due to superiority over another tribe. They used to kill out the tribe that is insignificant to them. Have them subordinate, have them submissive towards them, have them a slave. And if they refused, they used to fight them, kill them. That was the type of life that they had and they used to live when there was no concern of another human being life. How they lived their life throughout that throughout centuries, they lived their life like that, in that manner, in that way, in that method. And then when Islam came, when Prophet of Rasulullah came, he grew up, he saw the life of those people that they were living. That was a custom, that was a tradition. It was a normal life for them. And Islam came. Islam placed value in the life of humankind. 
Yes, I'm sure the value that a human life has and a human life cannot be taken unlawfully. It cannot even be threatened. It cannot even be taken unlawfully except with something that is right or there is something that is justly done for it. And Islam has established rules. Islam has established, re established regulations. Islam has established manners in way and how these things can go about and how a person's life can be taken and that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that regard Rasulullah sallam admonished that a life of a humankind is sacred it cannot be taken for no reason at all except if it's from these three categories and when we look into these three categories we see these are not something that is ordinary these are something that is towards an extreme limit towards crossing a boundary towards crossing the limit that mankind shall not be involved in. So as Muslims, we need to understand, we need to realize that this hadith, it is not from a negative point of view, but it is from a positive point because of understanding why Rasulullah came across, or why Rasulullah had advised and admonished us in following these methods because of the background, because of the history and the lifestyle of the people. And even today, if there was no law in the country or in the state or in our city, mankind will be lawless. Mankind will be without any remorse. As we see when there is a small crime going about, we complain so much. Imagine having killing for no reason as a sign of coming towards the last day. That is what be one of the signs that people will be killing without any reason. And that was the time before Islam came. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam giving this hadith telling us that a person's life is only taken for one of three reasons. It is not that he is encouraging us to take life, but Rasulullah is giving us a positive note that we avoid taking life unless in these three great scenarios or in these three great instances. That even towards the last sermon at the last Hajj of Rasulullah, وسلم, his last advice from his advices that he give from among his last advice, he keep encouraging and he keep admonishing mankind about treating one with good kindness and not to take the life don't kill the life of a muslim don't take the life of someone unless with this haq unless with this right unless it is due upon them unless they have done some oppression that deserve the taking of a life that is the only way one is allowed to take life and this is not only from islam before anyone was to say oh why did islam come with this a point to note the taking of life and retaliation which in arabic we refer to as kisos was done from since the time of the Nasara, from since the time and the deen of religion of what we know today as Christianity. That was something that was done from since from since those days. It was something from previous religion that they used to retaliate, that an eye for an eye, an ear for an ear. And that is a reason why this came about, that we have it also, that it's a form of reprimand. This is a form of sticking towards rules and regulation. We have to pay a fine if we break a rule and a law in a country. We speed, we have to pay a fine because we break a law. Similarly, if you do something towards extreme, Islam does not want to take a person's life, but if you go towards that extreme, then a life will be taken for carrying out an action that deserves of it. What may seem as a form of punishment, it is only made there to protect the community, to protect Islam, to protect our environment from all of these evil actions and all of these evil deeds, that is why in these three instances and these three things and scenarios as mentioned in the Hadith of taking a person's life, these things are such instances and such scenarios and action that cause corruption, that cause fitness and tests and trials and cause people to sin in a community and cause the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to descend upon a community. And let us be reminded that yes, in today's time, we may find these things, we may see it happening around us and it is very common because the way and the life that we live in in these modern times as we want to list it as in the century that we live in people have utilized and have made ways of the sins and things that has been prohibited in islam they have made it a means of attraction and beautification for us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself remind us about this religion uh, about this dunya this world in life in a form of enjoyment it is beautified it is a means of entertaining us. It is a means of making us losing attraction, losing concentration from our aim and our maqsad and our focus, which is towards the akhirah. And just as you and I, or we have Muslims to study in Islam, 
Similarly, we have the non-Muslim, we have certain non-Muslims that have studied Islam thoroughly, just as Muslims are studying Islam. And yes, you have non-Muslims that even know much more about Islam than even our day-to-day basis Muslim. Because why? People have tried to distort religion and have distorted many other religion, all the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that used to come before. Before the religion of Al-Islam, all the religions, we believe and we accept all the religions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. But the reason that we do not follow the other religion is because we believe that they were all distorted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he sent prophets after prophet, as in the last prophet come and the last prophet to come, everything before that was negated and that will be the religion to follow. And that was a case and scenario from every time. Any prophet that used to come to our tribe, whatever religion they had, it was negated and they had to follow from that prophet onwards. And yes, as in today's time, that there is distortion on the different books and it's been proven by many scholars before. So it's not something new that I'm seeing now. And it has been happening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved his book and his religion throughout 14 centuries until today. And you have people that study in Islam, the same people that has been distorting the religion and they've tried and they've studied to know the in-depth so they can try to alter and do that sort of distortion towards the word of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise is haq, is true, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his promise. So adhering to Islam, adhering to the rule of Islam, that is a way and that is the only way of minimizing and avoiding all sorts of wrong and going out of the boundaries of Islam and avoiding involving in those acts of disobedience which can lead one from involving in the acts that deserving of one life being taken away. And these three acts that's mentioned here, one of them is adultery of committing zina, committing adult adultery. The second one is that of murder, killing someone for no reason at all. And the third one is that of a murdered, a person who is an apostate who leave his religion. If we look at it today, all of these three sins are very predominant among us. But with our modern day that we live in, these same three sins may not seem and does not portrayed that much significance in our life. Today, how many of us sitting here, how many of us that watching this and listen to this advice, no friends, no colleagues, no our bodies, our pals, that was Muslim and they leave Islam? How many of us may see or may encounter or may have known someone that did a murder and we fight for their freedom or we fight that, you know, it's just an accident? Or how many of us we see or we know people that indulge in zina or naruto be life we ourselves indulge in zina in fornication in adulterer and being an adulterer so these things we know or we see it and it's becoming so common and predominant that if we speak against it it's like we will be told or we will, someone will say i will mention that oh you're so backwards or you're thinking only of the past and this is something common you live your life enjoy your life but no these three sins are something very severe that is why Rasulullah Sallam put them into that category by committing these three sins as such sins which will deter and which can come to the extent of taking a life of a Muslim because of indulging in this sin. And yes, taking a life of a Muslim doesn't have anything to do with a normal human being taking a life. Just as in today's time, we have the court and we have the, the magistrate and the law that's passed through court. And today there's some countries that still have the life sentencing. Similarly, this is how they Islam, when we talk of taking a life, it's not about an ordinary man or the imam or a sheikh or a scholar go and take it. No, it is through the law and the order and the command through court that they take charge of it. The Islamic court that take charge of it. It has nothing to do with an ordinary man taking a life of another Muslim, but it's through the hukum and through the ruling of a court. Similarly, just like the world that we live in and the time that we live in. So, a brief into the three categories of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also mentioned. As Buzani, the married man who is an adulterer. I translate as married man, but here it is not only specifically for a married man, but it goes for a married woman also. And the rule of that is that in Islam, there has been stoned to death as a form of reprimanding to show other people to deter from that sin. So a person that is married, their chest, they are within a, a bond of you are of relationship between the spouse, the husband and the wife and they are a bond that is not to be broken except at death or if 
Allah forbid, but if there is something wrong that they have to have a divorce in this life. But when you're within that bond, you are you made a promise to each other, you are to be sincere to each other, you are to fulfill that, you are to strengthen that. And most importantly, from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So one should not be able to have intercourse and have any physical relationship outside of marriage when they are married. And yes, it doesn't mean a person who is not married can have this relationship. Obviously, in Islam, there is also different punishment for that person, but it is not befit enough taking his life. But a person who has married and he's considered to be chaste and he involved in adultery, he involved in fornication, such a person is one of the categories of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned of. The second is, when nafsu bin nafs, as I mentioned, as I translated as murder, a person who kills a soul, his life will be taken for killing this, killing the life of another of taking the life of another person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Quran. وَكَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ فِيهَا أَنَّ النَّفْسَ بِالنَّفْسَ وَالْعَيْنَ بِالْعَيْنِ And we've ordained upon them that a soul will take in exchange for a soul, a life will take in exchange for a life. And an eye will be taken in exchange for an eye as a form of retaliation. So, a life for a person, a human life, it is something that is entrusted to us it is something that is honored and to just take it without any reason it is not permissible and one doing that it will be retaliated that his life will be taken again through the order of court and through the methods carried out through the court and the islamic court law and the third rasulullah mentioned al-jamara al a person who become an apostate who left, left his religion and he is abandoning the community and this basically the second part abandoning his community is an explanation from a person that leaves his religion because generally when how, how places were people were living in a religion and um, they were living in a community based on the religion and even today it can be considered as if you're a muslim you'll be attending one specific masjid masjid as siddiq we attend masjid as siddiq so you're from the community of masjid as siddiq when you leave Islam, you leave your religion as it, as it is also you leave in the Masjid of Masjid as siddiq you leave in the community of Masjid as siddiq So that is why Rasulullah Sallallahu mentioned a person will leave his religion. Now, they may be questioned, ask, oh, why you, you take the level of a person that leave his religion? What's wrong is that? What what that did, what action, what kind of action is that that you know, determine the life of a person? But if we were to look in the history and throughout time, a person that used to leave religion and used to leave Islam, the only reason he used to leave religion was because of causing tests, um, cause, cause corruption and cause trouble among the people. He ne they never used to leave religion and walk away and went on their own. But they even used to take people with them. They even used to make, you know, they used to invite other people to leave with them or they used to go. So. They used to not just leave religion in peace and calm, but they used to end up start causing fitna, they used to start causing tests and trouble among the people and corruption among the people. And from among this, some scholars even say that a person is included under this as a person who leaves the jamaat as a person who does bid'ah, does innovation, and that is another topic on its own. So at all time, we try to stick with our jamaat, we try to stick with our community, and we try to involve and stay with our congregation and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can have the understanding of this hadith and let us not look at it with any negative way but let us look at it in a positive way that is meant to be that a life of a Muslim a life of a humankind it is sacred because it is not from our own creation it is from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the life of humankind is sacred a life of a person cannot be taken except justly a life of a person will not will not be taken except if he done a wrong which deserve of it and is only one of there's only three type of those wrong as Rasulullah so mentioned a life of a person should always be honored should always be respected and Islam has shown so much respect to the life of a person that is why in Islam it is not even permissible for us to even sell our organs it is not even permissible as people may argue this point but it's not even permissible for us to even donate our organs as in our lifetimes that when we pass away I will donate my organs after I, I pass away. This body is not ours. If we say we cannot kill ourselves, we cannot kill someone, what makes it think that our body, what we have, our organs, is something that we can give away? No, it is a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from our Creator. When we die, we turn back towards us. It's return back to the Creator. 
So it is not ours. It is a trust and and um, given to us and entrusted towards us. So we have to take care of it. Similarly, we cannot take the life of a person while they are alive. When we pass, we have no right over our body also. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can continue to honor our humankind, live in unity, live in compassion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can protect one another. Always look out for our neighbors. Always look out for our colleagues, our friends, our family, our parents. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can be true flag bearers of Islam. I can be true person that show the true quality of Islam by being kind to one another. Jazakumullah khair. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته